So it is like time to start, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm so ready. it isn't like we're early. No. <clears throat> okay. No. Then I guess we'll wait. Okay. Oh, hey, what's that? Oh, it's another note. It's amazing how I can sit next to a piece of paper for so long and not realize I, it's there. Hey, I was staring at it too. I know. Don't feel bad. <laughs> Dear Caleb and Neil, uh, could not find a babysitter for my stones, audio and slave. Must reschedule. But we're already here. We got all of our things going on. Our studio audience is right. here. Yeah. Man. I really don't want to be on the couch again. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <clears throat> Let me make a call. Okay. Uh, hello, Jeffrey. I'm uh, wondering if you can do me a quick favor and come on over to the studio. We need a we need a co-host. Are you uh, are you available? Awesome. If you can get here as soon as possible, we'd greatly appreciate that. Like hopefully, like you know now. Great. I'll be right over. All right. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye, <laughs> So Jeffrey is supposed to be coming over ASAP. Jeffrey. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Weissman. Jeffrey. Our Jeffrey. friend Jeffrey. Yeah. Ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> Ding dong. Who's that at the door? The door is Ding dong. ringing. Our door is ringing. Don't make me knock. <laughs> Who is Jeffrey? <laughs> no. Whoa. Whoa. Hey, you Jeffrey made it. Weissman. That was Jeffrey cool. Weissman. What is that? Hold on. Hold on. I got the cord here. What? I've got the, oh, you got your the cord. Cut. Pardon me. Pardon me. Oh, man. You all right? I've come here to lasso you. But, Neil. Welcome. Baby. Thank you. It's kiss, kiss. Uh, no, I'm this side too. Yeah. And then down. Oh, no, not this time. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you want to come on oh. through? I asked for cash, not the. <laughs> Here we go. Here, take my hat. Do, 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 take my coat. Do, do, do. Hey, I'm on camera down here. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank take you. my sweater. He's me. Take my wife. <laughs> Do you, how's everyone in internet land? Is everyone hunky dory? Is everyone it, is very happy, I'm sure, because you're my here. old back can't take this position. Here, take my sweater. Thank you, thank you. Take my hat and your hat. Oh, take my monkey. What is this? <laughs> That's not a monkey. Those are. <laughs> Wanda's coming to take your stuff. Thank you, Wanda. Yay, Wanda. Yay. Wanda. <laughs> Wanda made me look beautiful. Don't I look beautiful? Jeffrey, hi, our special co-host. I thank I, you for filling in. I am just shocked that Kelly can't make it, but in a way, this is really great because I wasn't working. <laughs> <laughs> I needed a job. Thank <laughs> God I got this job. By the way, my agent said you never called back. What am I getting for this? Uh, you are getting a hearty handshake and adulation. No, and no, I'm out of here. <laughs> That's it. How, how about some scotch? Oh, well, now you're talking. Some scotch? <laughs> okay. That would be a good idea, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's water! <laughs> oh, dear God, I was told you had scotch! You okay? Oh, well, I'm better now. <laughs> I think you might have a little... <laughs> <laughs> a little hole in your uh, in your lip. Yeah, scotch. <laughs> I'll have none of your lip. No. <laughs> I might say that might be the first spit tape you've had on our show. It's about time. It is about time. <laughs> and and you know I only met Danny Thomas once in my life, and that's all I got from him. The spit tape. So, uh, he didn't do it necessarily in front of me, but I know he's famous for it. Um, do you m mind uh, scooting this guy over? He's really bugging me. <laughs> oh, he'll move. You just you're kind of wrapped up. I like you're all. Uh, you're okay. You're good. No, I took my coat off. Okay, you're good. Whew, man, you got me pretty good in that one. Well, it's really good to be free yeah. again. So, so, uh, so hey, you know, it, it uh, 16 years at Juilliard <laughs> uh, to do balloons and spit takes. Uh, do, do you know that? Um, the art of uh, spit take, I'll give it to you because this is free. Uh, and you don't have to pay Juilliard. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to blow a horn, a, a trumpet? You know, you go. I have done so before. With the... So you do that with uh, water in your mouth. Oh, God. Not again. Not again. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So you see it's this mist? Yes, very fine mist. Uh, the light catches the mist, but when you're doing it this close to your clown partner, you're not going to ruin their makeup. <laughs> right. That's a good $1,000. That's very, very important. Good. So my agent says you'll attack that on to my... That'll go, yeah. That'll residuals later on, <laughs> the back end. I'm going to get residuals? <laughs> All right. I got some residual residuals. stuff back here from residuals. the pizza I was eating. We need to get our, <laughs> we need our studio chip. audience. We need our chip card. <laughs> One of our studio audience is on her phone. Like, this is no, nowhere near entertaining enough for her. She's right now, she's like. <laughs> <laughs> she's all thumbs. Well, uh, <laughs> so thank well, you for let's coming. Let's get this show on the road. Thank you. What, what, oh, what does this mean? What does this mean? That's, uh, I saw Phil Silvers do this on the Gilligan's Island. My hand is empty. What does this mean? Give you Where's some my drink? Where's my drink? drink, right. <laughs> <laughs> you have some sure, some and you, scotch. You some, have some, some, and I have you some, have some, some, some <laughs> bourbon. Some, some bourbon. Can we pour scotch scotch? Scotch? Wait, can we cross arms? Can we do oh, like a, wow. That can we do like an arm cross? Oh, yeah. Sure. Can, no. I, know, I don't no. know. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Okay. You're gonna miss my I cut. I know. I want to. <laughs> I want to cross arms. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. enough for you. Well, all right. All right. What? That's all you. All right. Don't cross you the didn't streams. Give me very much. Don't cross the arms. <laughs> There's more where that came from. So for those of you drinking at home, uh, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> for those of you in your car, why are you, wa why are you even watching YouTube? <laughs> why yeah. Why are you drinking <laughs> and watching YouTube, YouTube while time. driving? Yeah. No. No. I don't want to do that. Cheers. Cheers. So, thank you, Cult Show, for having me on. It's been uh, a year? No, not quite. No, we had you on well, for it, our... It was last year, but... It was last year. For it our holiday December. episode. A, it was year ago. Yeah. <laughs> so long. Year and a year, year and year ago. Uh, so, yes, we are here, as always, to discuss pop culture and everything fun that is Hollywood and music and food and whatever it might be. And we know you definitely have some experience in the theater. Theater. I'm I'm so blessed in my career because I have uh, people from time to time pay me to come to their po pop culture events, oh. and I'm like, wow. Uh, and things have changed so much. When I was a kid, no one ever charged for their autograph. You know, when yeah. I was a kid. Uh, you know, there was uh, a uh, movie machine making machine that uh, gave out autographed pictures if you wrote in a fan as a fan. You know, I was looking. I have a a little card uh, photograph, black and white, about Jay Big, a Marlon Brando, with his autograph on it. I was like, oh my God, the studio. This was obviously issued by the studio because it's obviously a, a stamp autograph. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wow. thinking. Well, I get asked for my autograph all the time, and I, you know, I'm amazed that people will pay for it because I, I my, my writing looks like it was frozen in the fourth grade. <laughs> okay. Um, but still, they do. And I was thinking, why don't I get a really nice stamp of my autograph and I just, just do that? Yeah. <laughs> That's it takes yeah. the fun out of I'd it. I feel though. better about my handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> so, for anyone who doesn't know, our good friend Jeffrey. Oh, here. Of course. You do? Oh, hey, nice to meet you again. Uh, is of course, would you, would you say Back to the Future two and three are the? Those are probably most infamous. Uh, the biggest <laughs> films that I'm part of. Yeah. Okay. But you go so much further though with uh, roles and sure. All uh, kinds of other... Look me up. I need the clicks on my IMDb. There you go. I help. <laughs> I probably have uh, seventy credits on there. Okay. Uh, and Pale the, Rider, a good one, right? Clint Eastwood. Yes, my buddy Clint and I were like. I'm not sure who's who, but right. Uh, one was the spoon inside, and one was the outside. I, oh, you know, Clint <laughs> likes the spoon. <laughs> you know, I hear things. He would never tell. <laughs> You're probably right. Uh, no, I have great stories from that set. But uh, Pale Rider, and then uh, worked with uh, John Lithgow on Twilight Zone movie, uh, yeah. my first co-star credit. <laughs> but I, I started working, uh, like I say, on, on Twilight Zone movie, and then worked with Louis Mall on a film called Crackers with Do Donald Sutherland and Sean Penn and Wallace Shawn, and then uh, Johnny Dangerously with Michael Keaton. And, One of my uh, favorites. That's where I met Dom DeLuise, who comes in to play for tonight's theme. That's right. Since he's in uh, Blazing Saddles. And then uh, we did some television shows like Scarecrow and Mrs. King, uh, and uh, 
later on, other things like uh, Saved by the Bell, where I was Screech's <laughs> guru. <laughs> really? The high, the high geek. <laughs> oh, yes. You didn't know that? Cool. Oh, yeah, I just... Screech is guru. Award-winning. <coughs> <laughs> I have this, this sh enshrined, how do you call it? Mm. When it's bronzed, uh, retainer. Mm. And uh, for our studio audience, a retainer is something that goes in your mouth, <laughs> goes straight in your teeth, and it was a, an award for me a bron in bronze. <laughs> I got some giggles. That's all I, I really wanted. <laughs> Thank you, Caleb. <laughs> yes. Uh, did little bits on shows like Max Headroom and I Dallas. Love Max Headroom. You do? Yeah. Oh, I'll tell him you said that. Tell, tell Matt I said hi. Yeah. Okay. Matt was a g gentleman. He was a wonderful man. Uh, oh, my drink. I have it. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Your cup, you, by the way, you said it was a fan-made uh, container, mm -hmm. correct? My name. Yeah. And it's not my handwriting. <laughs> I can read it. Do you know who made it for you? Uh, yes, this this wonderful um, fan who s met me at WonderCon, uh, oh gosh, probably uh, four or five years ago. She lives in Reno now, and, and she just loved that I was doing, I was producing an event for Parkinson's, uh, for Team Fox, mm -hmm. for Michael's charity. Uh, I produced the Back to the Future cruise to end Parkinson's, and I put a band together called Mr. Fusion, made up of cast members from the Back to the Future movies. Okay. And uh, we didn't do great. I, I, I sold 50 tickets instead of the couple hundred that I thought I would, but we still raised about 10 grand nice. for, for the cause. For the cause. That's, that's yeah. Awesome. And, and my band, is, I'm, I'm putting the band back together. Ooh. Oh, good. I am. Excellent. Go, Ellen. Uh, this year being the 30th anniversary of Back to the Future Part Two, in which I got sixth title card with James Tolkien, uh, I don't think it was even sixth. Huh? I think you were like fourth or fifth. I'm fifth, maybe. Okay. Anyway, I I, I just watched the recently. I'm I was proud counting. that I I got that. Yeah. You know, I'm very happy uh, to be up there with good that, position because that cast was so solid, and I I was the adopted, whatever I was, and uh, <laughs> the the uh, band is getting back together for another Parkinson's fundraiser in Chicago in July. Okay. So we're we're gonna do an, an enchantment under the sea dance. Nice. And cool. uh, if you're in Chicago, July 19th and 20th, look us up, uh, outoftimefoundation.org. Okay. All for Michael's charity. I mean, Michael's such a great guy. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. It's all about him. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We should try and make it. Let's do it. I've never Chicago. been to Chicago. Me, I've not what? Been, I've been <laughs> in never a, been to Wrigley Field? or nope. I've been to Midway Airport, and that's it. E yeah. E in. Sorry. Went been, to the airport. Been to Michigan a couple times, but... <laughs> Remember, uh, I mentioned to you I was cast in Return to Horror High. Yeah, that was about eighty. That's a good story. Eighty-six, somewhere in there. Yeah, it uh, was cast as the assistant director of the film being shot inside the film, and huh? uh, went to the pre-shoot party of the director's house in Malibu, and met uh, Maureen McCormick, McCormick, you know, yeah. Marsha Brady, and she was the name in it. Yep. And there was a young actor that we, we started having having good time, George Clooney, who was one of his first films. And uh, the, the, like, I got home from the party and the producer called. My, my, Hi, how's it going? He goes, listen, your agent's got it wrong. I want you on a daily contract, not a weekly. I was like, well, th my agent you know, is my business person. Uh, yep. Let me call her and call you back. And he goes, no, no, you go with my, what I'm saying now or go with my second choice. And I was like, well, let me just call her back. Click. I was like, oh, I was, I was cast and uncast <laughs> in a matter of moments. And I, was, I called my agent. I said, this happened. And she said, don't worry about it. And sure enough, a month later, I got paid for two weeks' work that I never did. Yeah, but... But I'm not in Return not to seen. Horror High. Uh, I know. Oh, Return God. the Horror High. But I am in Flying Saucer Rock and Roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see that? No, uh, you know oh. I have not, but we know that. Uh, you don't want to see it. But you're uh, Kelly. Cult, I guess it's a cult film. Our co-host, our, our Kelly. Kelly's in it. Yeah, she's your co-host. That's you're, true. You're, sorry, your co- I'm sorry, Kelly, if you're watching at home, I love that film. <laughs> <laughs> co-star, co-star, that's what I'm looking Height for. Height of my career. <laughs> Actually, uh, Joe Calero, the father of Eric, who Eric Calero, who wrote and uh, stars and shot that film, became a regular on I think it was the Late Night Show, Letterman. I think he was like, like Chris, what's his name, the guy underneath the audience. Anyway, he mm. had a career. Okay, that film, it was about 
pot smoking zombies from outer space or something like that. Anyway, good film. <laughs> Twilight Zone, on the other hand, George Miller, you know, who directed Fury Road and yeah. Babe and... Uh, well, the original Mad Max stuff. and yeah. uh, He had just come off of the success of Road Warrior Mad Max and was directing the segment of Twilight Zone that I got called in on. And what a gem of a director to work with. If you have something that inspires you when we're rehearsing, talk to me if it's lines, if it's business. And we came up with some stuff and it was the most exciting set to be on. It was thrilling, all the special effects and the great yeah. talent. He cast a great ensemble. I've been very fortunate to be plugged into incredible ensembles on Pale Rider that Clint put together. If you look at the talent across the boards on that, from Richard Dysart and Kerry Snodgrass to Sidney Penny and Richard Keel and uh, Richard Hamilton and uh, uh, all the deputies and the big sheriff, John. Uh, anyway. I'm very fortunate. Then Zemeckis with Back to the Future, great ensembles. Yeah. I've been truly blessed. Yeah, for sure. It's and, been... and the ensemble here, of course. Oh, of course. Oh, of course. This is, this is the pinnacle. <laughs> this is the pinnacle. I, I drink to you guys. <laughs> Thanks for dragging me out of my house. Thank you for... You've made Thank it. you for... You are filling a very, uh, some very big shoes by... No, Kelly's probably, what, a size eight? Nay. Well, I don't know, but... I'll try to fit. I think she's you, like a four. She's she's <laughs> such she's so adorable. I I hope she returns soon. Yeah, she I mean I need the work. <laughs> <laughs> she is she is busy off doing other other business, other things. So she'll be back. Oh, she'll I be back it. soon. Other business. Yeah, other things. We'll have her back soon. But in the meantime, you are here to fill again a large a large but petite spot. I'm not that big will. or small. <laughs> it's figured. I'm not telling. So, you mentioned Dom <laughs> DeLuise. <laughs> Speaking of Dom, yes. Uh, so, uh, let's see. When I, I worked with Dom on uh, Johnny Dangerously. He played the Pope. And then, ironically, this is very odd, but uh, he would come up to Universal because he voiced the cat in the Fifold Mousekowitz uh, American Tale show. And he started doing these live remotes to promote the Feifel Mouskowitz American Tales show. And he would have us there always. He always was able to request us because we were characters there. Feifel, you know, the cat, whatever other characters, and Laurel and Hardy, a natural. It was natural. Yeah, of course. <laughs> anyway, so this early morning press junket where we were going to go live to 10 different uh, AM America, Good Morning America type shows across yeah. the country in different time zones, and they were timed very specifically and all this. So, uh, you know, Dom uh, is happy to do these things because it's promoting his career and whatever he's got coming with a new candy camera or whatever he was doing. And um, just before we went live, I think to Phoenix or somewhere, uh, the PR guy from Universal said, Dom, do you mind wearing this Universal Studios hat instead of the candy camera hat? And Dom was like, huh? Huh? <laughs> And, and he said, wait a minute, uh, let's see, these people here are paying my mortgage, and these people I'm doing this for free for, but you want me to wear their hat? And, and you could hear, you know, people bristling. It was like, <laughs> even though it was 7 in the morning or 5 in the morning, whatever, it was god awful early, uh, all of a sudden this tension mounted, and Dom was playing the scene because he was, he was furious. No, I'll wear your hat. And so he puts on... The universal hat puts his candid camera hat aside, and then Dom, we're live in five, four, three, two. Hey, we're here for live from Universal, where there's a great big rat, and he <laughs> he goes off. Dom always goes off uh, live. You can hear the people in the studio saying, "What's going on, Dom?" Oh yes, we're here. We're at the opening of this, and uh, it's Christmas is coming. Yes, we're very happy about Christmas. And let me tell you a story. When my house, we're very Catholic and very religious, and all the children had a lot of siblings, and my sister, she got to set up the tree, my brother got to decorate the tree, and I got one year. I couldn't wait until I got to set up the nativity scene. And so I got the nativity scene out of the box for my mother, and I got the little Joseph in place, and Mary in place, and the donkey, and the everything in place, and there's a guy. I unwrapped the little baby Jesus, and I looked, and I said, oh, Jesus Christ, your face is dirty. Now, <laughs> mind you, 
we're live to the to you know central uh, United States or whatever, and, and and Dom is working it, and he says, oh, I've got to clean your face, so I, I took. I'm, you know, he's a little boy. I took him to the sink and I washed his face and I scrubbed and I scrubbed and I went, and, Jesus Christ, you got no face. <laughs> I scrubbed the baby Jesus' face off. Oh no, what am I going to do? I cried and my mother, I was like, Jesus. So, all right, in the course of this two, three minute interview, Dom DeLuise has broken all the rules of national broadcasting. He said, Jesus Christ, at least a dozen times. <laughs> And he swore a few times, and he's took, and as soon as we called cut on the live thing, he took off the hat, and you could see he was still fuming. And he took off the hat, and he said, where's the guy who gave me the hat? I want to thank him. <laughs> Dom was just an amazing piece of work. He, was, he would request us to open for him uh, at Candy Camera to work the line, getting in, or warm up the crowd before they start taping. And uh, <laughs> I would do this bit uh, where Stanley would always get caught up in the in the stanchions and the ropes, you mm -hmm. know, and or a woman's purse, you know. I had just physical bits to do improv comedy to entertain right. while there's nothing going on. And Dom would always shout from his trailer, which was right there, "What's going on there? Don't hurt yourself!" It was very <laughs> funny. He kind of narrate our bits. It was very funny. And then uh, he would call us into his his dressing room and. Uh, he was, you know, Dom was, you know, he kind of, I think, went many ways. And he had this uh, young assistant that he was quite fond of, but he, the boy would never do what he wanted. And, and Bancroft, who was his best friend in the world, he'd get on the phone and say, I don't know if I should fire this boy or not. He's not treating me the way I want. Or, you know, he would like get a, and he was often in pain and he would swear like you wouldn't believe. But, you know, he was a, a wonderful fellow. We, I was at the silent movie house one evening. For a Buster Keaton festival, huh. and there was Dom. He was uh, in his in his uh, because his knees were so bad, and it was oh, fuck. the things he would say because of his pain in his hips and his knees. Um, so he was in a kind of motorized chair, and uh, and he brought uh, Mel and Ann Bancroft, Mel Brooks and Ann Bancroft. They were wow. there uh, with him, but during the intermission, I went out and Dom saw me. I said, Dom, how are you? Oh, Jeffrey! Oh my God, Mel! And this boy, he does Stan Laurel, Charlie Chaplin, Groucho Marx. You see, you think they're there? It's like, oh, blah, 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 blah. and I was like, oh. and actually, I had, and I said to Mel, I said, we actually have met before. I, my Marx Brothers team auditioned for you uh, at Paramount for Men in Tights for the big banquet scene, and so Mel says, oh yeah, I remember. I liked you. I liked you guys, uh, but we had to cut the parts because. Uh, we, the budgetary concerns, all the money went to the actor playing Don Corleone in the scene, which happened to be Dom. <laughs> <laughs> so at that point, I turned to Dom and I started strangling him. But that, that was a, a wow. really precious moment. Uh, so I had met Mel when I was a kid, uh, right out of high school, uh, or while well, I was still in high school. I got cast in the show in Hollywood uh, that was being done at the University of Judaism, of all places. Uh, title, get this title. The travels of Benjamin the Fourth to a land where seldom has heard a discouraging word, which I thought later on was the Frisco Kid, um, that that actually my friend Frank Shaw wrote. But as he, Frank told me, no, it wasn't based on that show. But anyway, it was about the first Talmud coming from the East to the Wild West, and it was a musical. And we had the guy uh, Ken Ken. His name is Ken Myers, the guy who starred on Space Patrol, the live TV show Space Patrol. He was one of our leads in that. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Look it up, kids. Google it. And uh, I remember uh, the Copper Penny across the street, I'd go take my coffee breaks over there, and there was Mel. I was 16, 17 years old, and there was Mel ha um, with his friend. Uh, I was like, Mel Brooks is over there. Oh, my God, my God. And his friend left, and I ran over and sat on his booth. <laughs> and Mel looked at me and said, uh, someone's sitting there. And I said, this isn't my orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> and? I was too. I was too starstruck. I was, I and it's so stupid because only a year and a half, two years previous, I had. You know how you get starstruck. Hmm? You know how it is. I, so I was. I, and it's so stupid because I had great common ground to talk with him, uh, but I was just so enamored of his great success with Young Frankenstein and, and Blazing Saddles and so on and so forth. Uh, but. Uh, to, Less than two years before, I had heard that he was in 
town in Santa Monica where I went to high school shooting a film. So instead of taking the bus home, I ran alongside it and saved 50 cents. No, uh, <laughs> I, I walked home. And, uh, and uh, shortly in the Santa Monica promenade, I saw people in Victorian evening wear. And there was one large heavyset gentleman whose, whose mustache was flapping. <laughs> I said, excuse me, sir, your mustache is flapping. He goes, oh, is it? Who are you? And I said, why, I'm an actor. And he goes, oh, yeah, what have you done? I said, oh, well, I did Merchant of Venice and Dark of the Moon and, and you know, all these shows, uh, White Spirit. And he goes, really? You want to meet Mel? I said, Brooks. And I go, uh, yes. And I said, of course I would. And he took me to the Mayfair Music Hall there where they were shooting the Putting on the Ritz dance number for, oh, for uh, Young Frankenstein. Wow. And the first person I came face to face with was Marty Feldman. Oh, and I was wow. very impressed because he was in street clothes. He wasn't dressed as Igor, but he was carrying a man bag. He was wearing a Merce which I carry now. It's, mine's right over there. Yes. And I was so impressed. It was the first time I saw a man wearing a merce, and I was like, Marty Feldman. And, yeah. <laughs> and then I met Peter Boyle, who was in the creature makeup, and I was like, look at the shades of green. This is going to look so great. When it came out in black and white, <laughs> I was like, oh, no. <laughs> anyway, so we go in, and I see what's going on, and, and it's so exciting. And Mel comes by, and Roy says, my friend Roy Wallach, who uh, took me on the set, he says, Mel, you want to meet this kid? He's a good actor. And, and, and Mel says, I have no time for kids. So that was my uh, great Mel, Mel Brooks experience. <laughs> that was your first time. <laughs> first time, you got the first time, the second time. The uh, <laughs> third time was at Paramount for the audio. Fourth time at the silent movie house. Uh, <clears throat> that might be it. I didn't realize there was a camera up there. I should start working, playing that camera. Hello. Oh my God, there's this. There's cameras but everywhere. But this one, this one, there's no one on it. Should we no, go over there over too? There. No, it's okay, you're fine. Unless you want to stand up and so this is your wide do a little jig. Right. So that's when close. I took my sweater that's off, right. I might have been on that's that. That's the close-up. No, that's the close-up. <laughs> so, uh, let's. <laughs> so, blazing saddles. We can discuss. Can we? I think it's it's uh, too un PC. It is a very un PC <laughs> film. Would never be made these days. Pretty safe to say. I it think, was such a hit when it came out. Yeah. It was so friggin' funny. But uh, blazing saddles, like, still makes fun of. America coming to grips with its racism. Correct. You know, when I was a kid watching the Watts riots on TV live, uh, I was like, what, what is going on? Why is this happening? And my parents really, you know, were somewhat liberal Democrats who tried to explain to me what was going on for the civil rights movement and so on. And uh, it's still, it seems non-ending to see people not treating each other as humans instead of by skin, skin color. So. Anyway, history will repeat itself if we don't learn from history and, uh, you know, enlighten and educate. And in a way, all this history educates, and if you find the entertainment in it, which, like Spike Lee did with Bamboozled, mm -hmm. what uh, Mel did with, with uh, Blazing Saddles, was to enlighten, just like kind of wink at you and say, you know, this is racism. We're going to poke fun, but please, get over the bad stuff. I think that's what is behind Blazing Saddles. And yeah. I don't think it should be taboo. And it's a god-awfully fun, fun, silly film. I've got a great story. <laughs> and it's in the bonus material. So I'm, it's not originally from me. But Mel says that he was, uh, you know, he was writing um, Young Frankenstein at, at night with Gene Wilder uh, at, while casting and, and getting uh, Blazing Saddles off the ground. And he and his agent were in the commissary at Warner Brothers, and they saw John Wayne. Mel said, you know, John Wayne would be perfect for this cowboy character I have in this. He'd be perfect for that, you know, uh, tough, stupid cowboy. And then his agent said, go talk to him. Go talk to him. He goes, I'm not going to talk to John Wayne. No, no, no. Yes, go talk to him. And so his, I guess his agent pushed him to doing it and said, Mr. Wayne, I have this part for you in this film that I'm here going to go into production, be honored if you would consider playing a role in it. And John Wayne looked him right in the eye and said, give me the script, I'll read it tonight and I'll call you in the morning. Just like that, you know. By the way, John Wayne's my mom's fifth cousin. Really? Yeah, Morrison, <laughs> my mom's mom's maiden name, Morrison. He's related somehow to Michael too, isn't he? Yeah, way back. Yeah, cool. Anyway, you guys, I, you guys are related. I never met him, Larry. You guys are somehow together. <laughs> you gotta do the family tree, cousin. <laughs> the executive producer is my cousin. <laughs> So uh, You just got a bump and pay, Michael. <laughs> John Wayne calls Mel Brooks the next morning 
and says, I fell out of bed. I read the script at bedtime. I fell out of bed. I laughed so hard. That is the funniest thing I've ever read, but I can't do it. It would ruin my reputation <laughs> if I took that role. And it was the role that Slim Pickens, Slim Pickens plays. Yeah. Wow. But didn't he also, I think I read a story about that where he said, I can't do it, but I'll be the first in line to see it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 that's, look the, at the, that's the story I heard. The bonus <laughs> material that Mel interviews at, uh, on the 25th anniversary, I think, of Blazing Saddles is on the VHS, uh, the DVD. <laughs> look it up. Either Laser, or. Laser disc. And then he tells the great story of Gig Young, of course. Tell it. Go ahead. You know, the original, uh, you know, uh, Gene Wilder's character, is that the sheriff? No, he's Gene Wilder's character. Yeah, in in, in Blazing Saddles, Frisco. He yeah. plays. He plays a uh, Frisco a something kid. So the original so Frisco, Frisco kid, the, the original the Waco Frisco kid, kid. Waco kid, the Waco kid, Waco kid, the original Waco kid was offered to uh, Dan Daly. Remember the actor Dan Daly from the MGM musicals? Mm -hmm. He wanted Dan mm -hmm. Daly. I don't know why. <laughs> and he found Dan Daly. He was retired in Hawaii, and so he wasn't going to do it. So he found another name actor, Gig Young, and Gig Young was the original Waco kid. Didn't hmm. they film a scene with him? The the first scene they the first you scene know Gig is Young when, uh, like me Gig Young was heavy a uh, drinker. <laughs> <laughs> and so they filmed that the the first scene they filmed with him first, was, was when it, he wakes up and he's upside down and he's hanging upside down. Oh, okay. Will, you know. And Gig Young was so such a wake? bad. Yeah. Are we black? Are we black? <laughs> <laughs> but when he was upside down, he was so drunk that he started vomiting. <laughs> uh, bile. <laughs> he was he was very sick. Yeah. And. And since uh, Mel had a writing session with Gene on the phone that night, Gene was in New York, uh, he says, my, I, what am I going to do? My lead actor is spitting up bile. He's coughing up blood, whatever. Uh, he's sick. I can't use him. What am I going to do? And Gene said, I'll take the red eye. I'll be out there the next morning. Wow. And that's how he got the role. And thank goodness, though. Are we going to run the show, run the film now? <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back and talk about it again. Yes. <laughs> Commercial break. Okay. Thank, so, you know, thank goodness. This, this mm -hmm. is the studio audience. We need more people. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, or science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Let's okay. talk Blazing Saddles. Let's Blazing Saddles. <laughs> so, I love Mel Brooks. Really? So there's a picture right back here of Mel Brooks. My God. Because he's... He's a handsome devil. He's a good-looking young... I love the uh, a qu a quote. My wife always says this, that she saw him in an interview saying, I'm the funniest man I know. <laughs> <laughs> he is, if you ask me. You put him on screen, I will watch. Me too. No matter what Me it is. Me too. There you go. I, I was going to write him to come to our production of Young Frankenstein up here, and the director asked me not to. He was no. too insecure. I was like, come on, this is a fantastic production. You should see it. Yeah. He would have been proud. Because we, we did something that uh, very few productions do where we actually projected the sets, but very well, and with uh, interchanging slides and, and interchanging sets, and a really fine production. Tim Setzer, local wonderful actor and Allison Ray Baker is our um, yodeler. <laughs> Mary Ganim Graham is our Frau Brucher. Uh, Brucher. <laughs> Stolt brought the house down with her number. To, uh, he was my boyfriend. Really great production. <laughs> and I wasn't, I wasn't too bad either. There were, we were nominated for six uh, Bay Area Critic Awards. And nice. four of them won. Mine didn't. Son of a bitch. My tap dancing, I hadn't tap danced in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get uh, him next time. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Caleb. <laughs> he's, he's the voice of morale. I need you, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Shuffle off. So uh, there are so many highlights to this film. Yes, there are. I am a big fan of uh, when you have Mel Brooks and Harvey Corman together. I think the two of them together. Hedy Lamar Hedy. sued. Hedy, yes, she's sued. Yeah. I, I, I saw that. It's Headley. Headley, yes. And then, and apparently he, he was saying how he walks down the street and people just go, Hedy! And he'll do, <laughs> it's Headley! You know, <laughs> just like walking down the street. And it was know? hard for me to put my m brain around <laughs> because cause I watched, it, it made news headlines that she was suing him. for and, and I was, you know, 
16 at the time, 15 at the time. And I was like, why would she do that? You know, she was a star in the 40s, whatever. I knew she was a, a iconic Hollywood screen goddess. But why would she, doesn't she have a sense of humor? But there was a, an integrity you had in old Hollywood. Yeah. How dare you infringe on my brand? You know, they didn't call it a brand back then. But uh, it was insulting. And, and uh, I own that, the rights to my own name, and you're insulting. And defamation of character, whatever she sued for. Mm -hmm. I think they paid her. They did. They did. And, and, but yeah. she also was a huge brain. She in, uh, was in, instrumental for inventing what we now have as Wi-Fi. <laughs> did you know that? No. She was instrumental in inventing something called radar and Wi-Fi. Hedy Lamar, look it up. <laughs> she worked for uh, the, the, the cause of the righteous in World War II and, and invented things. But, so I digress. <laughs> Those are two facts. All right. Look them up. You're online, right? <laughs> Wait, no, don't turn the channel. <laughs> <laughs> Open a new window. We'll either flash it, it's true, or it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Caleb. Over. To quote uh, Amazon Women on the Moon, bullshit or not. <laughs> so. so it was originally Richard Pryor. Yeah, they wanted him to play the part of Didn't Mark. he help write it? He did. He did. But War Warner Brothers didn't want him. He was too controversial. His records are so <laughs> friggin' funny. <laughs> Yeah. God bless him. And but then he got all messed up on drugs, like most of us, uh, during and, during and, the seventies. Burned himself up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> accidents will happen with a yeah. <laughs> crack pipe. Um, but you know, but don't God take, bless that doesn't him. Take away from his talent, he, though. His heart came through. His heart. You could just see in his eyes what a sweet, wonderful man he was. And you know, everyone is susceptible. <laughs> have another drink. <laughs> is susceptible to. Imbibements and yep. and uh, indulgences, and if you hit success very quickly, you know Robin Williams went through it. So many people have gone through re rehab and and uh, addictions and and wrestled with that demon. And you know I I I I'm sorry he didn't get it, but I, I thought Cleavon level little Cleavon. <laughs> Wee! I thought he was magnificent. Cleavon, Cleavon yeah. little. He was yes. fantastic. He in was the role. great. Yes. Uh, and. Uh, to be so, is it self-effacing? To be so okay with poking fun at making, you know, parodying racism. Right. Mm -hmm. And and also Slim Pickens and all the the uh, other great Western actors who were playing the racist cowboys and all that, and playing along with this tongue-in-cheek stuff. It was very, very edgy, but also timely. And even though it got sophomoric and scatological, <laughs> it was though progressive with the hope that people would enlighten themselves to saying this we got to make fun of this otherwise it's too painful yeah that's a i hope i hope you guys buy into that because i'm selling it <laughs> <laughs> well no 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 i mean i i read a really good quote that uh, from mill brooks that said he wrote the movie out of, of anger at white corruption racism and bible thumping bigotry so that's that's where all of this is coming from, um, wow. and and he does it in such a way where you know although the the white characters are in charge, they're also the idiots. You know? oh, so. No question. <laughs> so so uh, you know we had to, what was it seventy four that it came out yeah seventy three seventy four seventy four and and uh, then was it twenty twelve what uh, seven years a slave. You know, I'm just thinking the progress that mm. we made. Have we mm. evolved? And uh, can we take, you know, can we take responsibility for the mistakes and, and uh, grow and enlighten and elevate? And we're back. Ha ha! Cheers. 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 <laughs> we're still. Don't crack my cup. <laughs> clink, <laughs> clink, another drink. Yeah, da, 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 da. God bless Spike Jones. <laughs> Why, Spike Jones? What did he do? That was a song I was just drinking. <laughs> that was a song you were just drinking? Yes. Sure. <laughs> clink, clink, another drink. Look it up. We're going to give you a lot of things to look up at home, but wait till the show is over. Take notes. Take notes. <laughs> he was just drinking that song. You heard him right. <laughs> Clink, clink, another drink is a fantastic you know that song. I, I have tried to like drink cocktails scotch. for two. 
Oh, How'd you've tried to drink scotch, and I just, I don't know. You have to be in your 40s. Like How old are you? 45. See, you're not there yet. I'm not there, not quite. Okay. <laughs> right, right. How old do you have to be to drink scotch? <laughs> you're not drinking the right scotch, but it tastes like Band-Aids. Ooh. Uh, uh, no? Uh, I don't know. I've Maybe, tried. Maybe, you know, go with the more, more patey. Go with your Lafroy La or, or your Lagavulin. Those don't taste like Band-Aids at all. No? No, no. It tastes oh, like peat? Oh, yeah. I, mm. I, I, I love my moss. Oh, lad, yes. I love me moss. <laughs> no moss. <laughs> Whoa. Where did that come from? <laughs> you know, we, did a, we did a pirate you episode you like last year. Your, your, uh, <laughs> bourbon. You, uh, you singing pirate songs? We did songs? a pirate episode. We, did, uh, we talked pirate for a while. Arr. 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 Exactly. Yeah. It was, we did it so well. <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing my pirate socks, me Argyle. <laughs> Damn, that's what I didn't think of. I had a lot of R's in there. Yes. Do you know what the do you know what the pirate paid for his earrings? A buccaneer. Ah. There you are. Come on, kitties. <laughs> a buccaneer. Damn. My friend uh, that I did ch ch kids theater with, where I met my wife originally. 1972, uh, Leah Rimberg was in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Oh yeah, you remember uh, P Pintal, the character, uh, little guy, the tall one kept losing his eyeball. Yeah, yeah, the little guy, Lee, my friend Leah Rimberg, founded uh, the Actors Gang with Tim Robbins and Ron Campbell here in the Bay Area and and Billy Zane and company. Yeah, great. Billy Zane, they all, uh, all came out of UCLA. Back to the Future alum. Uh, yeah, Billy and I were like. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure who's who, but again, wow. <laughs> he signed. He signed some. You very, and Billy were like this. He said some very. <laughs> <laughs> like this. Is that the chip? <laughs> I, I, I just wonder. You know who's who's the card carrier. Ah. <laughs> uh, wow. Mm. That was, uh, <laughs> no, no. When we were shooting uh, the, you know, card carrying member fighting. Yeah. Fighting Biff in the parking lot at uh, yeah the high school two. in Hill Valley High and at Whittier High, where Nixon graduated of all people, I was just oh dear God, I just <laughs> learned that. Uh, so uh, you know there were long long hours, and I'd go and party with Billy in his trailer, and and you know we'd get stoned and listen to music, and I loved it because I I've been a DJ for many years since uh, forever. And I had these mixtapes, and I'd, I, I used to trade with River Phoenix and, and other celebs. Let me drop some other names. And, uh, <laughs> and I brought one of the mixtapes into Billy's uh, trailer because he had a tape, tape machine, and we were getting sewn and not doing anything. And he knew the lyrics of every friggin' song I mixed on that tape. And we spent hours, and he knew the lyrics of everything from Elvis Costello to XTC and all. I was like, hey, Billy, Billy Zane. Cool. Yeah. He seems like a cool guy. So was Flea. Flea. I love Flea. He, yeah. was, he was delightful. It was kind of cool to work with him. I, his uh, bandmate, Anthony's dad, uh, used to come into the club I DJed uh, on the Sunset Strip. It was the Imperial Gardens before it was the Roxbury. And I had a glam night and a mix night and uh, Blackie Dammit, who played the bad guy in a lot of, like, was he in Repo Man? He was a lot of uh, bad movies in the 80s. He was often the bad guy. Blackie Dammit. Look him up. Blackie Dammit. That's Anthony's Anthony's dad from Red Hot Anthony Chili Peppers. Anthony dad. Blackie Dammit. Talk about drug-infused days. Oh, dear. I didn't... We never, I never talked about the fact you DJed before. That's, that yeah. is news to me. I, I DJed at uh, KRCB and Cows and, and uh, like I said, on the Sunset Strip and various clubs. Like the DJ, like DJ? Yeah, or uh, the like Cafe de Grand in Hollywood. <laughs> I DJed there. The house you band. You playing like Pina Colada and stuff? Like uh, Not quite. It was more uh, Bauhaus and New oh, Order cool. and Joy Division. Uh, wow. Um, when, uh, stuff I like. Uh, when I was at the Cafe, the house band was Top Jimmy and the Rhythm Pigs. And his band, he, I mean, Carlos Guitarlos was always in the band, but then he'd fill it in with other members of other bands like The Blasters and X and Los Lobos. That was our house band. Wow. Yeah, but circa 80, house band. 83. Yeah. yeah. So by the way, Blackie Dammit was in Lethal Weapon 3. He there you was, go. I knew he was Blackie. The, yeah. Or Lethal Weapon, sorry. He the was first one? The first one. He was drug dealer number three in the Christmas yeah. tree mm. lot where we first meet. And the producer mm. of the club was also, he had written the script for, what's the movie where the car, was one of the first times a car goes from one building into the other? 
No, it's no big thing. Never mind. Leaf 11. <laughs> Leaf 11 4? That was it, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's his picture look like? I remember some of those guys from the first one. He, I mean, especially the one guy. He in looks just like his Kinda name. Young, but <laughs> he actually he actually looks. Look like Anthony. Quite a bit. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think yeah. I know who that who was. He's the one is. that Anthony. Like, uh, I never knew that, for but now looking at him, it, you're and, like, oh. Shit. And I totally understand that. He was it, mm. was. it was a party scene. Can we talk about? Uh, Madeline Kahn. Yeah. Oh my God! Oh, I'm sorry. Do you love her? Oh my her? goddess! <laughs> you love her as much as I do. Who doesn't? If you if if you don't love Madeline Kahn, you you're mm, Russian. Wow. You're a communist. You're no. <laughs> you I, think, are, I think the Russians love you're, her too. You're you're, no, it, you're you're dead to me. You're probably <laughs> you probably just you know just enlighten yourself. But Lily Van Stoop. Boy, oh boy, the way she just ruled. The screen, the way she, you know, hey, cowboy, you in showbiz, <laughs> the way she <laughs> d commands her performance is just so incredible. It's like you just instant love. Yeah. Well, it's one of those scenes where she's not on for very long, but the, the, the few movie. minutes yeah. that she is, she, she seriously owns it. Yeah, so. no question. Yeah. She's huge talent, always, always was and everything. She did, you know. She, yeah, she, she stood out. Madeline and I, we're like this. <laughs> um, I think she's on top. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> what a magnificent and and you know, let's see, Bernadette Peters and Terry Gar. And, you know, there's so many great, lovely talents from that that period. Uh, I'm just, you know, in awe of these these wonderful. Talents that you know. How how is death possible? You, why death shouldn't happen? <laughs> These people need to live on. So naturally, mm -hmm. Madeline lives on. Luckily, uh, on on film for us all. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. she really does. But much too early for sure. Much much. <laughs> I can't tell. I'm getting in my cups. I'm doing this. <laughs> We're all gonna die. Oh my god! gonna happen to everyone. That's all right. It's all right. We're all in this together. But you know what? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we're here to talk about Blazing Saddles. <laughs> blazing Saddles? Sorry. Any favorite scenes? Anything you... Oh, that, no. That, uh, no? Mm. Put you on a spot. Here's a, a, a Laurel and Hardy handshake. A Laurel and Hardy handshake. Uh, <laughs> we present... There's so many. Uh, uh, all right, Mel Brooks going, uh, work, 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 work. <laughs> How you doing, boys? <laughs> <laughs> the Madeline That's Kahn. Yeah. Yes. Uh, no, no, that wasn't Madeline no. Kahn. That <laughs> was no, 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 you're right. <laughs> Sorry, that was the girl, the other girl. That's he was right. looking at decolletage. That's right, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's Mel Brooks is hysterical in that, too. They're all so great. What was that actress's name, though? I have no clue. Oh, but no, if I she's remember, watching this, she's going to hate it. I us. remember her red hair. I remember. I only remember, I remember the, the eyes. The boys. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the boys. How are you, boys? <laughs> uh, let's see. What other great scenes? Um, I like uh, Cleavon when uh, at the beginning when he's like takes himself hostage. Yeah. You know, and he's walking through like. Yeah. Can you believe that O.J. Simpson stole that? Stole that years later. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good and, one. That was a good one. And then what in the <laughs> wide world of sp the yes. name of the wide right. world, of sports? My world of sports? I mean, if Slim Pickens just so <laughs> wonderful in that. I. Uh, so apparently he did not like saying some of the things the script needed him to say it was very unorthodox and, and Cleavon Little had to take him aside and say look you know you didn't I know you're not saying this I know you didn't write this someone else did you're just saying lines you know if if I thought you were really saying this you and I would have a problem but don't worry about it just do it you know like commit to it own it and he was a big yeah. star he had a big yeah. reputation himself he brought his own trailer mm -hmm. apparently to the the set and, yeah uh yeah, yeah, so. I, yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> Sat out there with his Winchester rifle. Talking <laughs> Slim Pickens. This is Slim Pickens. Yeah, he, yeah. Well, yeah, he wouldn't yeah. go. Apparently, he stayed in the outside at night. Right. Yeah, yeah. wouldn't go. He wouldn't go inside with at everyone all, else. Yeah. Everyone else was. <laughs> I don't blame him. <laughs> and they had a stench. They worked on the hot lights all day. No, I don't know why. 
I yeah, maybe he was just a real cowboy and just liked the outside. You know? It was once again a great ensemble. Fantastic, absolutely. It was. I mean, I don't know. Like I said the, the, you think of who's in that movie and how good they all are. Nah, Harvey Korman. Nah, but don't it you wasn't. think that's the beauty no, of, of, Mel, yeah, was of, of Mel Brooks though? Is yep. like finding people's talents and then putting them together in this ensemble cast that works. Are you referring to me because I perfectly. didn't get cast in Men in Tights? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, I, I see it. No, I, you're absolutely right. He, I mean, you look at the ensemble for Young Frankenstein, the casting was absolutely brilliant, perfect. And so on every every level. Oh, yeah, Young Frankenstein, to be Kenneth Mars and to Life Terry Gar. <laughs> Just kidding. So what happened with Mel? Did he, I, th I thought, you know, <sighs> Spaceballs just didn't grab me. Huh. I know, you guys loved it, huh? Yeah. I don't know why it didn't <laughs> I grab me. I do, I love Spaceballs. Maybe because I was so, I waited so many hours in line for Star Wars that, uh, you know, you, he was making fun of such a, I don't know what it was. <laughs> I'd lost my <laughs> sense of humor. Maybe I'd lost my sense of humor uh, during that period. That could be. You were dis disillusioned. I thought, you know, was it Rick Moranis with the giant... Yeah. Giant, giant helmet. Dark helmet. Dark helmet. I thought that, that was funny for a second. Nah, that helmet know. part What's is... What's the matter with me? I don't know. There's, yeah, I don't know. You, have you tried since then? No, I have to go back and watch it again. Okay. I don't think I've sat through high anxiety either. I remember silent movie liking that, especially when Marcel Marceau went, no. <laughs> <laughs> How about uh, History of the World? Uh, no, I don't think I, was saw, I saw the whole... Oh, no. Oh, boy. But we're talking about Blazing Saddles here, which I've seen several times. And liked. I love it every time. <laughs> and have no problems with anyone in the cast. <laughs> oh, we all get along. Well, in fact, we're... <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so here's something it might be fun to do. Yes. What, hap what is the plot of this movie? What happens in Blazing Saddles? Aside from a lot of, apparently, offensive... Jokes and Waco Kid redeems himself. Okay, true. Perhaps helps uh, a racist community overcome their foibles. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> helps uh, Cleavon Little put his name on the Hollywood Star, uh, Hollywood Walk of Fame. <laughs> okay, no, he probably was there already, wasn't he? I do not. I know. hope so. I don't know, but. Uh, I gosh, would you, what are your answers? My, oh, my answer is that you have, uh, you have a uh, the plot of the film, if you will, is actually you know a, a gentleman, boy meets girl, Cleavon gets sent to go uh, be the marshal of this town of bigots, basically of the time, and ends up winning their hearts because you have to get them out of a big jam with uh, the governor and Harvey Corman's. Uh, bad intentions and then uh, wins the town over at the end and they spill over and eventually spill onto Dom DeLuise's <laughs> dancing set of, on the Warner Brothers stage. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, so this is your elevator pitch. Okay, I, I'm getting it. Uh, nice. I liked it up to spills out on the set. What happens there? What happens there, right. What, what, what's up with that? The big fight scene at the end, the climax. Why? Happens when they're all coming together and fighting. I don't get it. And they're in the Wait a minute, we've gone from a western to a movie set? To a movie set. Oh, no, you've lost me. There you go. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> hey, what happens? Hedy uh, gets into a, does he get into a cab or something? Or gets into a car at the end and tries to drive off? So he runs away, and then he goes to the movie, he Blazing goes, Saddles. <laughs> That's right, he goes to the movie. To see That's what right. happens. And then Cleavon Little's Bart character rides a horse after him. <laughs> And Count they Basie and no those orchestra are out there playing <laughs> yes, in the they, desert. They meet Count Basie. <laughs> they do a you know, nice little 70s, give me some skin, brother. If it wasn't for, <laughs> if it wasn't for shows like Laughing, that film would have never worked. I, I, you know, it's, well, it, Warners didn't think this film was going to work. <laughs> it was irreverent, but it's also what I think the audience needed to release sharing that racial tension stuff. Yeah, for sure. That helped a lot, I, I would think. I mean, it, it, something to talk about, you know? And here we so, are. And here we are talking about it. How many years later? Wow, 30? 40, 40, 45? 40, 45 years? Oh. 
What I'm was, not that old. Came out this year. 74? The, the year we were oh, born. Oh, yeah, yeah, so. you're born. Good point. <laughs> How old am I? 45? So, yeah, yeah, this one wow. is 45 years old now. And it this, came out in February, too. That's the month so, we were born, even. It is. It is. No, well, so, sorry. My point, my point of saying that is that uh, February typically is a throwaway month Feb in the February. In the, February. In the <laughs> movie industry. Two hours. And so <laughs> Blazing Saddles ooh, ooh. had the record as the most successful February opening film. February. Until <laughs> Black Panther opened last year. No. Really? You're joking. Wow. Well, hi, how ironic is that? The Black Sheriff and mm -hmm. the Black Panther. Yeah. February. It's pretty cool, right? Library. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm. <laughs> uh, so Jeffrey, you are yes. here with us for at least one more episode, depending on if no, we renew uh, the contract. Am, no, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I was told it's a half hour show. I've been here for an hour and a half. That's that's one, two, three. <laughs> that's three shows. I think your agent. I told you wrong again. On I, the, uh, I should have got a d deposit. <laughs> well, be sure to tune in next week <laughs> when we discuss the Brady Bunch movie. <laughs> <laughs> Tripping with the Brady. We'll talk some more. Uh, yes. So thanks for tuning in. Next week we're going to discuss Raiders of the Lost Ark, another film that I saw once. <laughs> We'll, we'll give you a little more detail <laughs> than that when the time comes. <laughs> uh, so, uh, hey, where can we find anything about you? If we need to know, Jeffrey, where you live and your social security number. <laughs> where, where the, the door there. Uh, you know, if, if you want to follow me, God help you. Uh, uh, Twitter, Home. at J-E-F Weissman. I don't know why they, I couldn't get two Fs, but... Uh, w e i s s m a n at Jeff Weissman on Twitter on Instagram Jeffrey J Weissman. Why I couldn't get Jeff Weissman on that I don't know, but there you have it. And then I have a fan page on Facebook and JeffreyWeissman.com. You can email me that way. Um, though I really need help if anyone wants to help me with that website. It needs revamping. Thank you. There you go. And, if and, you and we're doing events. All year for the 30th anniversary of Back to the Future Part Two, there's uh, Mr. Fusion playing in Chicago in July for the Out of Time Foundation .org. Out a time, not of. There you go. And then we're going back is the fan celebration where we go to all of the locations that Back to the Future was shot, and cast and crew members are there to do Q's and A's and the special events that will blow your mind. And uh, that's in Los Angeles in uh, the third week of October, I think the 24th through the 27th. And then before that, in September, in the Sierra Foothills, where we shot Back to the Future Part 3, is backto1885.org, uh, or .com, I'm sorry, back to 1885, where it's unreal. Terry and Oliver Holler out of South Carolina come all the way with their Time Machine DeLorean, and you will not regret it if you're a Back to the Future Part three fan, the first night you'll go to the Delgado mine and find the time machine uh, after the f campfire feast. Uh, you'll do the Hill Valley Festival with the band that actually played backing ZZ Top in the movie. Uh, you'll go on a ride on the actual train that Doc Brown uses to go into Cl Eastwood Ravine. You get on a ride on the DeLorean on the tracks to break through the very, it's just a, an amazing, you'll do a, a zip line uh, as Doc Brown, uh, a really an amazing event. And all three of these events are to raise money for Team Fox for Parkinson's research. Do you know if Dean's coming to the 85 thing? You never know year? who's going to show up at these. It's always amazing. I know he went last up. year to that. Right? Dean, Dean and I were there with Marvin McIntyre, who played The Undertaker. <laughs> And, and ironically, Marvin and I were in Pale Rider together. Mm. And then, uh, you know, the one in Chicago, I can't tell you the special guest, but besides the Mr. Fusion band, I can guarantee there are three other cast members going to be at that one. Uh, and at, we're going back. Uh, last time I did that one, we had probably 20 cast and crew members from the films at, at that one. 
Wow. So it's if you're a Back to the Future fan, you'll wet your pants. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good I already time. have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> you looked. <laughs> he needs changing. <laughs> Wanda. All right, and then as always, you can find out more about The Colt Show by going to thecoltshow.com. Believe it or not, that is our website address. You can send us emails, info at thecoltshow.com. You can follow us on Instagram, at the Colt Show Rocks and Twitter, that the Colt Show underscore, and you can go on the roof and send us smoke signals and Where, uh, where's your the calendar? Pigeons, the your pigeons. calendar is posted where? The calendar for what? The Colt, uh, your Colt series here. Oh, then there's the actual Colt film series, which yeah. is our live thing. Yes, which I'm going to next. Thank you very much. I'm here to help. Good segue. Uh, the Colt. <laughs> you guys are like this. <laughs> <laughs> which one am I? The, the, Colt, the Colt film series. <laughs> Uh, you're the host. There's so, my uh, chip. No, there it is. You're, you're on top. <laughs> the Colt Film Series at the Roxy. Uh, you can find that at thecoltshow.com as well as uh, Facebook. There's a Facebook page for the Colt Film Series as well. And don't forget, we do films, we talk, we do all kinds of fun things. If you're lucky, there's even some of that. Are you going to do your Scream Queen event again? Uh, we're planning. We're, we're planning and planning. we're talking. Special events all talking. the time. If you want to keep up on the special events and appearances for Back to the Future, go to backtothefuture.com or bttf.com, which is launching its brand new website uh, probably as this is premiering. Cool. All right. This is like like real co-hosting here now. Is that, you know? You know, I... I it only took two it, hours. Is this a, <laughs> is this a corduroy uh, couch? <laughs> Do you like it? Yeah, well, every time I lie down, uh, it makes headlines. <laughs> <laughs>